Read test review test four, radicals, problems three and four. For question number three, we're going to take the square root of five and we're going to multiply it times the square root of 60. So you can multiply any value that is underneath a radical. So five times 60 gives you 300. And then we're going to take 300 and we're going to break it down. So that could be um, 30 times 10. You could also use your 5 times your 60 if you want. And then we have 30 is 3 times 10. And because we're taking a square root, we need two of the same number. So if you look here, we have two 10s right here. So I'm going to just stop right there. You can keep prime factoring if you want, but I'm going to have it as 3 times 10 times 10. And we know that 10 times 10 is 100 times 3 would give us the 300. And on a square root, the index is a 2. So as long as I have two of the same number, that number can leave the radical. So the 10 drops out and the 3 will stay home. So my answer will be 10 square root 3. For question number 4, you have 2 times the 4th root of 2 times 3 times the 4th root of 8. So on a, in a situation like this, you can multiply the numbers outside the radical. So 2 times 3 would give me 6. And then as long as the index is the same, you can multiply the numbers underneath. So that would be the 4th root. And then 2 times 8 would give me 16. And I always want to simplify radicals if I can. So I'm going to take 16 and break that down. That's 4 times 4. 4 is 2 times 2. 4 is 2 times 2. So I have 6 on the outside. I have the fourth root. And then there's four twos. 1, 2, 3, 4 underneath. And for a number to leave the radical, there must be four of them. And if you'll notice, we have four twos. So that means our 6 is already outside. 2 will leave. There's nothing left under the radical, so it's gone. And we're just going to take 6 times 2, multiply together, and we'll get 12. And that'll be our solution.